we go. All right. Hello, YouTube and Instagram. I am here, Ken McIntyre uh, from Moai. And today our focus is on the littles. Uh, little people in our lives, babies, uh, young ones. They have aches and pains and imbalances that, you know, they really don't even know about. And that's what we're going to be doing today, offering some energetic balance and support so that they can grow and learn easily and effortlessly. And that's our goal. So I'm just getting a little uh, connection here up on Facebook. Maybe somebody will come through on Facebook and want some questions also. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me a question. Shoot me what you've got going on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, if your child is having uh, problems nursing, uh, gaining weight, uh, constipation, uh, grumpy all the time, anything and everything is available. Uh, and if the baby will energetically connect with me and you give us permission, amazing things can, can happen. Uh, if the baby's not crawling yet, if it's time for them to start crawling, I can ask, is it time? And then if it is, okay, where's the imbalance in relation to uh, your baby crawling? And I'm going to get off this screen share here. There we go. And wonderful. All right. So back to now, back to my Zoom meeting. All right. So, one thing that I did for my daughter from even when she was still in um, my wife's womb, in my wife's belly, is I, I tapped. I tapped for my daughter. And I talk about tapping a lot. It's emotional freedom technique. Uh, TappingSolution.com has done, done a lot of great work. Uh, but the great thing about tapping is, you know, it, it's easy. The only way, wrong way to uh, practice tapping is to not tap. That's it. All tapping is is a connection of the unconscious brain to the conscious brain. The, the unconscious brain is where all of our emotions and the I can'ts and I don'ts and, and our hardwired uh, reactions to things hangs out. So, of course, we all want to feel better, but our unconscious mind might not know how. So when we tap on these meridian points, Chinese med medicine meridian points, and we talk or think or visualize the things that we would like to change or want the information on how to change them, then that creates, that releases the mental blocks, that releases the dams in those meridians that run throughout your body and help you succeed in whatever you're doing, whether it be healing or business or life or, or whatever making a change. So today, since we're working with the littles, I'm going to read you guys a book. And this is called I Love You Stinky Face. Great little book. So while we're reading this book, I'm going to be tapping. Now, if you're reading a book and holding your child, hey, that's okay. Be happy about what you're reading. Feel a connection with your child and a way to feel a connection to your child is uh, breathing and we'll tap into that uh, momentarily. I'm going to check everything out here. Very good. And let's see, just before we start here, I'm going to do a little edit to my Facebook post. Here we go. Mama said, I love you, my wonderful child, but I had a question. Mama, what if I were a big scary ape 
Would you still love me then? If you were a big scary ape, I would make your birthday cake out of bananas, and I would tell you, I love you, my big scary ape. But mama, but mama, what if I were a super stinky skunk and I smelled so bad that my name was Stinky Face? Then I'd plunk you in a bubble bath, but if you still smelled stinky, I wouldn't mind. I'd whisper in your ear, I love you, Stinky Face. But mama, but mama, what if I were an alligator with big sharp teeth? I'd buy you a bigger toothbrush. And if your throat hurt, I'd look inside your huge mouth. I'd tell you, I love you, my dangerous alligator. But mama, but mama, what if I were a terrible meat-eating dinosaur? Then I'd make you a mountain of hamburgers to eat. I'd say, I love you, my sweet, terrible dinosaur. But mama, but mama, what if I were a swamp creature with slimy, smelly seaweed hanging from my body? Then I would live by the swamp and take care of you always. I'd tell you, I love you, my slimy swamp monster. But mama, but mama, what if I were a green alien from Mars and I ate bugs instead of peanut butter? Then I would fill your lunchbox with spiders and ants and the tastiest bugs you'd ever have. And I'd pack a note with all the bugs that said, I love you, little greenie. Bon appetit. But mama, but mama, what if I were a one-eyed monster? Then I would look you right in your one eye and say, I love you. And I would sing to you until your one droopy eyelid finally closed and you fell fast asleep. I love you, mama. And I love you, my wonderful child. And that is I Love You, Stinky Face. Wonderful little book. And that is how easy tapping is. You can tap for your child. Doesn't mean you have to tap on your child, okay? As you tap on yourself and you hold your child, your child is receiving the benefits. They are energetically connected to you, just like I am to you, where if you're listening live or if you're listening in the future, there is a connection and we can make a shift. So as that, as your child rests in your hands or your child lays in their bed and you tap and you read or you talk to them in a, in a happy, joyous, loving voice, they feel your shift, which allows them to shift within themselves. And that's what we're looking for with our little ones, letting them grow effortlessly. Uh, my child, Willow, is nine, going on 10 in a couple months. And I don't believe that she's ever complained about a growing pain, okay? Not to say that she hasn't had aches and pains because she does love dancing, she loves ballet, we're uh, jumping on the trampoline now. And so we fall, uh, for instance, she came in and. And uh, she started practicing her dance and she says, Dad, when I do a big inhale, I get a pain in my chest. And so we did a little work and found out, oh, it's just a little nerve that quite fired up. You probably crashed one time yesterday, get, did a little compression in a, in a pole, and the nerve got fired up. So let's go ahead and calm that nerve down, calm the nerve down. She takes a big inhale and lo and behold, she calms down. All right. So what could you do for your child if you're say for instance uncomfortable reading to your child and nothing wrong with that uh, for instance when I first started reading to my child I'd have I've had a lot of head injuries and concussions which I've been able to heal great uh, gratefully uh, but reading to my child I would get so frustrated because I would fumble the words and especially if I was tired I wouldn't be able to see the words I'd have to have the light directly on there so I could see the words because everything was fuzzy and then I would fumble my words, my tongue would get twisted up, and it, it was made me angry, made me not want to read to her, but I knew reading was very important, so I would read to her every night. But as I continued healing my, my brain and my cranium, now we actually have competitions reading Dr. Seuss, who can read the fastest with the less jumbles. So we, have, we like to have fun with that. So if you don't like reading, excuse me, I have a apple chunk coming through. Let me just check in 
on uh, everything see if I have any comments or interest and that's okay if I don't because I still know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing so if you don't enjoy reading you can practice breathing mindful breathing okay now mindful breathing means paying attention and being aware of your inhale and your exhale paying attention being aware of how your body is responding to this slower breathing because a lot of times we get into almost a fight or flight state throughout the day and, and we forget to breathe and all of a sudden we are trying to catch our breath all day right and if if you noticed my neck was flexing to get that inhale right so if you're breathing with your neck you are not getting a full complete breath into your lungs and you're using neck muscles that connect your ribs so you can imagine what you can start to to acknowledge why my neck hurts all day all the time and it never gets relaxed i massage it i go get a massage and my neck is still sore the next day well it's because you're not changing your breathing pattern and so that's why i tell tell people train your patterns okay don't just go in there and do it and then drop it all when you walk out the door but train them so take your young one in your hands give your young one a hug even sit by your young one's bed and practice your breathing now the breathing i teach it's a three second inhale and a five second exhale now this does not mean you have to fill up your entire lung cavity in three seconds okay it simply means a three second inhale and i will demonstrate that now okay so that was a three second inhale now if you've been breathing like this three seconds might seem like an eternity it's not it's only three seconds okay so i'm going to demonstrate that three second inhale again and on the exhale i'm going to exhale for five seconds so work with me here and inhale Okay, eight seconds. That was it. Three second inhale, five second exhale. I don't know about you, but my brain calmed down. Now realize I am talking nonstop. And so that changes our breathing pattern and our oxygen levels get a little imbalanced if we're talking for a long time. Although it hasn't been too long yet. But this is a way to reset yourself. This is a way to not have jet lag. So if you practice your breathing like this when you're flying on a plane and going on through different uh, time zones, you won't have as much, if any, jet lag when you get there. It's a very powerful tool. But also remember, your child is connected to you energetically, so as you calm your nervous system, your child's will calm. Your heart rate calms, your child's will calm. If your child is old enough to want to do what you're doing, hey, have them. Okay, I'm going to count with my fingers and you inhale when we count to three and you exhale when we, as we count to five. And just make it a game. Kids love games, all right? And there's no loser in this game because as you breathe, you receive the benefits of the oxygen carbon dioxide balance in your body, in your brain. Your muscles operate the way they are supposed to. Your brain offer, operates much more efficiently and you heal faster when you breathe with this pattern. Now, when I started practicing this pattern, it was extremely frustrating because uh, I would practice out on my favorite hiking trail and I couldn't take 10 steps without losing my breath and getting overwhelmed. But what I would do is I would stop and I would start tapping about the anger, the frustration, anything that came up in relation to it, and a week later I'm I'm inhaling for counts of 10 and exhaling for counts of 20. It was incredible. But I had to re release those emotional attachments and balance those, those muscles and nerves and bones. All right. So I'm going to open up myself because somebody may come through later on that has some questions and they can watch along with this video and uh, get some input. Let's see if there's anybody out there now. Is there anybody 
out there. Nobody yet, and that's okay. All right. So birth is birth is hard and hard on mama and hard on baby, especially if baby doesn't come through in a timely manner or if baby comes to through too quickly. Do, 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 do. I'm going to share a little screen here. And when I say traumatic, one of the places that I'm talking about is the cranium. Hmm. Pardon me here. And back to Zoom. Here we go. All right. So the cranium. All those bones want to be perfectly aligned and able to energetically or physically, whatever your belief, move as the cranial sacral fluid pumps up and down the body. Hmm. Excuse me. And if one of these bones gets stuck through childbirth, or even when they start walking and they take a hard fall, one of those bones can get stuck and impede their ability to grow, impede their ability to move efficiently uh, in a coordinated way. And that will lead to more and more compensations uh, in their body as they have to move, have, as they have to compensate, compensate. Things are coming through. I'm getting a little jumbled. Okay, I got to slow it down a little bit. Not so much information coming through. As they continue growing around that impingement and they continue compensating, they're going to have more and more aches and pains. They're going to be disappointed because now they can't hit the ball. When they're playing baseball, they can't catch the ball. Or in when I came back from a winter in Colorado with a lot of uh, broken collarbones and, and head injuries, I couldn't, I couldn't catch a softball anymore. I used to be an amazing outfielder, right? Had an arm. And I couldn't catch a softball anymore. I would be running for it in the outfield and I would see 10 balls out there. It was horrible. I got that back. It's very nice. I don't understand the game of softball anymore, so, <laughs> but I got it back. So we're going to be working with some babies' craniums right now. I don't have any live, but I feel as though somebody's going to be watching later on and their baby will very much benefit from this. Okay, so as I work with these cranial bones here, let's point an arrow to them here. Every bone, say for instance, the frontal bone has a specific motion, right? Forward and back, but it can also get stuck side to side at diagonals. And all of these bones have their own movement, own, their own movement. Um. So I'm going to go through, I'll be silent here for a little bit until we find some balance. And then I will talk about some of my findings. I probably won't remember all because there's going to be a lot of balancing. Now when I do balance the cranium, I'm also looking at the collarbones, uh, sternum, sacrum, and the pelvis, and the tailbone. <sighs> so... While I'm working, you practice your breathing. Three seconds in, five seconds out. Take your time with it. Don't count too fast. Okay, if you're wondering if you're counting too fast, you probably are. Just slow it down. Okay, don't overthink it. You might be yawning. You might get uncomfortable. You might feel yourself shifting. 
that's okay. That means you might be receiving, receiving some of these benefits also. So enjoy. And today we're going to be working on some teeth. Ooh. I do believe my niece is actually coming through. She is, uh, she's been teething. She's got all of her teeth in already. She's now two. Uh, but she's dro still drooling a lot. And so I'm going to make sure that my sister-in-law sees this. She's doing a great job at raising those kids. Her and her husband. Good. Okay. So now, I'm not fumbling my words now, I'm not, I'm thinking much better, but I've got some pressure in my head. So that tells me I need a little bit of support to possibly release anything that might have come through. Or something is coming through from somebody who's going to watch later. And they need some support. Uh, so let's see, elements of the earth. Wood. Earth, water, fire. So we're going to bring in fire element. It's all about movement. <sighs> Closely tied things of a passionate passionate and transformative nature. Is it, a connect, it is a kinetic force that exists through movement and action. If it were to stop moving, it would lose great power like a wildfire. So we're imagining fire coming into our life. Just like a wildfire, it has a determined, aggressive willpower of its own. Fire is transformational and an energy that transmutes anything that comes across it just as fire turns to char and ash. Any, uh, to anything it comes across. Qualities of fire as a whole are passion, drive, willpower, transformation, warmth, and power. So as, as we bring in this energy, it doesn't mean that for everybody it's going to be the same. Very important, okay? For some, we'll bring the fire down. For others, we'll build the fire up so that the fire's not overly aggressive, not, not too much energy, but more energy than you've got. So we can find that balance, right? So lots of fire coming in. So I've got a little candle here burning. Imagine that fire coming into your spirit, into your soul. <sighs> Yawning is a good sign. What am I doing? I am doing too much, so I'm going to block off some things here. I'm a bit overwhelmed energetically. Focus on my breath. There we go. Good. 
Okay, fire element is done. Good. Okay. So that was cranial work for the littles. And then we're going to do a little limbic system work here. Let's see, pituitary gland is not is not marked, but there it is. And then pineal gland is back here. I gotta get that get that picture on here. That's a pretty important picture. So I will work on that. Okay. There we go. So we're working with the hypothalamus, temperature, hunger, and thirst, part of our reptilian part of our brain, our unconscious self, if you would. Working with the brain stem of your littles. Working with the cerebellum, coordination and movement. And then we're gonna go back in, balance the cranium and right in relation to all of that. And bring in some more fire element. And let's see, we pulled a couple cards today. First one is Pelican. Choose to follow the path of forgiveness and raise your, your vibration. Forgiveness for ourselves, forgiveness for others. Because if we carry along that sadness, that anger, that hatred, it hurts us more than it hurts them. And then another one is Imagination card. This one's a nice one the kids would like to see here. Imagination. Or imagine what would you what would you see feel think and hear if your wish came true right manifestation right and we can integrate tapping with that a healthy child tap about what it would sound like to have a healthy child very good okay well thank you so much for following along today I hope this helps you in the present or the future. And as always, feel free to follow along on YouTube or Instagram so you can receive up-to-date lives. I will having a be having a regular live on Fridays at 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time uh, talking about whatever comes up. So hopefully you need a little inspiration. In, if you need a little inspiration in your life, feel free to tune in, shoot me a question. I'll, I'll try to get it addressed for you. So you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time.